Hey guys, welcome back to Bible Fun with the Duns. Today we are studying Exodus chapter 17. Jax is going to recap it for us. Okay, so today starts out with more complaining from the Israelites, and they're getting really thirsty at this point because they've moved around a lot. So um, they threaten to stone Moses, which is not good. So Moses goes and he talks to God, and he's like, hey, they're about to stone me. They're really thirsty. So um, I'm going to need some water to give these people. And um, so God tells him to get water from this big old rock. So Moses takes the staff that he used to part the Red Sea, and he smacks this rock. Which is what God told him to do. Uh-huh. And it breaks in half, and this big old river flows. And then the Israelites get their water. And then we have a second story in this chapter, and the Amalekites are fighting against um, Israel, and Joshua is leading their battle. And um, as long as he holds his arms up in the air... Who? Joshua. No. Moses. 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 Right. So as long as Moses um, has his arms up in the air, then they will win the battle. So Moses' arms get tired because... A battle doesn't last for five And who minutes. can hold their arms up for a really long time? Maybe well, I should try it. Holding a staff. Go try it. <laughs> anyway, um, so his arms get really tired, and um, these people give him a rock to sit on, and these two very kind ladies hold his arms up for him. And so... Men! <laughs> They're men! Men. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, one of their names was Her. So... Yeah. It's they kind of threw me off. Her with a U. <laughs> like, oh, purr. Anyway, um, and so they help him hold his arms up, and they won the battle. And they win. Okay, so today is kind of frustrating for the reader because the Israelites who just saw God's hand do mighty works, literally with water, like a huge miracle with water, are now concerned that they're not going to have water to drink, like God's going to not provide now. He totally did all these miracles in their lives. And now this is the one thing he's not going to do. And so it's kind of, at least to me, it's a little bit frustrating. But as I read about the Israelites and God, I get frustrated with them. God likes to point out the ways that I'm like the Israelites. And so I get nice and convicted. Do you ever grumble? Do you ever complain? Do you ever lack faith for God to do something when he's done so many things in your lives time and time again? Yes. And so although the Israelites get on my nerves, um, I see myself in this too. And so I love that Moses goes to God about it. God gives him instructions and God takes care of his people as always. Well, then as they're in this place called Rephidim, they have been traveling around in the wilderness and now they're in a place called Rephidim. And the only thing I know is that's what the Bible said. Um, the Amalekites, bad guy, the bad guys come and they want to fight Israel because um, they see them as a threat, I guess. And so Moses, this is where we start hearing more and more about Joshua. Joshua is going to lead his army, uh, the army for the Israelites, and we're going to see Joshua get more and more involved. Moses tells and fight the Battle of Jericho. That's right. Moses tells Joshua to get some people together, to get an army together to go fight against these men. And so while they're doing that, Moses said, I'm going to go up on this hill with my staff. And so he goes up on the hill and his brother Aaron, that's how I know it's boys, and her, um, the Bible mentions him a few times. They go up on the hill with him and I'm so thankful because um, what they noticed was when Moses was ra would raise his hand, the Israelites would win. But if his hand started going down, they would start losing. Isn't that so weird? And so Moses was like, okay, I got to hold my staff up so we can keep winning. But then he's probably starting to shake. And so, it's so good that Aaron and her are there. They go get a big stone for him to sit on. And one stands on one side and one stands on the other side. And they help hold his arms up. And so, um, this chapter shows us lots of good lessons. Jax, first, what's your takeaway from today? Okay, so um, my takeaway comes from the part that Mom just explained. Where um, God uh, put Aaron and her in that... Uh, Place where they could um, help Moses um, with raising his staff. And I not only like 
that part where God put them there, but I like how they saw that um, Moses was in need of help and they helped him in that moment. Agree. So that's my main takeaway today too. I kind of shared a little bit about my baby takeaway. Um, in this chapter, we see the Israelites are so quick to go back to their habit of grumbling and complaining. They've seen miracle after miracle now with plagues, with the, the uh, parting of the Red Sea. And here they are so quick to go back and remember Israel. I mean, remember Egypt as being like a better place than it truly was. And we'll keep see the, seeing them make these mistakes. But what I said is I want to learn from them and I don't want to be like that. I don't, I don't want to be so quick to go back to my fleshly ways of grumbling and complaining and not remembering what God has done in my life so much so that I think my life of sin or my life of hardship is better than walking with the Lord. That's never true. Um, but my main takeaway today is we see the importance of having people around us that love the Lord, who can join in with us in this life of us trying to live for God and bringing Him honor and glory through our own lives. We are not meant to do this alone. We've talked about this time and time again. God made us for relationship. He's all about it. The very essence of who He is, y'all know I'm doing a study on the Trinity. The very essence of who He is is relational. He's three and one like it's not just him he who he is as god the father um he would not be without the son um and so the very thing that he is is relational so he wants us to have relationship with him and he also wants us to have relationship with others and we see that through scripture when he says don't forsake assembling together we see times like this um instance after instance where people need each other to help each other out. There will be times in all of our lives where we come to the end of ourselves. I've been there many times when we realize that we're not enough. We cannot do this life alone. And that's when we realize our need for God and also our need for others. When we have people in our lives who also love the Lord, when our burdens get too hard to bear on our own, the Lord will help us. And a lot of times, the way that he chooses to help us is by giving us other followers of him, other believers to help us out. So for today, today's challenge, I want you to think about your own life. Who are your Aaron and your her? Who are those friends you have in your life who can um, help you through those difficult times, who can help you continue to live your life for the Lord, whatever your calling is from him? Who are those people in your life? Um, if you don't have those people, pray for God to send those people. Put yourself out there, whether it's uh, joining a church family, joining a small group. Find those people in your own life. And then my second question is, who can you be Aaron and her for? Who are you um, supporting and helping to bear burdens when your friends go through hard times? You need those people in your life, and you also need to be those people to others. All right, friends, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm having the best time reading about Moses and Exodus and now our new friend Joshua. And I can't wait to see what else is in store. See you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.